One of the greatest assets of the county is Wilkes Community College, under the leadership of Dr. Howard Thompson, its president. The college is now housed in temporary quarters. Under construction at the present time is a million dollar plus campus in Wilkesboro. The new campus will be occupied within a few weeks and this summer Wilkes County is looking forward to celebrating the dedication of the new campus with a special week of festivities. During recent years, the Wilkes Community College has probably meant more to our county than any one single institution. I'm here at Wilkes Community College with Dr. Howard E. Thompson, the first president of Wilkes Community College from 1965 into 1977 when he retired, and with Dr. James R. Randolph, the current president of Wilkes Community College. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Dr. Thompson, could you give us some background information as to how Wilkes Community College came into existence and how you became its first president? Well, taking the first part of your question, probably Wilkes was very lucky to start in the mid-60s. And by lucky, I'll elaborate a little further. In the first place, the community college program started in 63 with a commission by Dr. Hamilton of NC State. And he recommended that there be a community college, one of 17, in Surrey Wilkes, he hyphenated it. And we were indeed fortunate at that time that we had Judge Hayes here in the community. And he fought the Battle of Wilkes by going to the State Board of Education to convince them that no community college could exist between Surrey and Wilkes, since they were both politically opposed to each other. And the State Board, after hearing his plea, in the mid-64s decided that if Wilkes by itself could pass a bond issue of $500,000 to be matched by 500000 of state funds, that the state would approve a charter for an institution in Wilkes. And Dr. Hayes got busy in the summer of 64 and in September of 64 a bond issue was passed authorizing the 500,000. So we were lucky at that point. And secondly, we were lucky that the state board did charter Wilkes Community College in September or in October of 1964, the first day. Then along came Mr. Lovett. We were lucky that Mr. Lovett had the land. And secondly, that the Watson Brame Expressway was completed at the same time. So we had highways all intersecting at Mr. Lovett's land for 268, for 421, for 18, and for 16. So that wherever you came from, whether it was Ash, Allegheny, Warsaw, or Winston-Salem or the like, you ended up at a point of the land of Mr. Lovett. So Mr. Lovett donated the land. We were indeed lucky there. We we're also lucky at that, or Wilkes was also lucky at that point, that it was in a package deal. Governor Moore was inclined not to add to the community college program. But Lenore wanted to become a community college from a technical institute. And so did Davidson want to become Davidson County Community College rather than Davidson Technical Institute. And the head of the Board of Trustees for Lenore County Community College to be was Tom White, who was head of the Appropriations Commission for the state of North Carolina. And he prevailed on Governor Moore to pass the package deal, so Wilkes sneaked in on that point. Then at the same time, we had the money voted by a bond issue of 500000 And on the last day of the General Assembly, 
the General Assembly approved $500,000 for Wilkes. So we had a million dollars for the state of Wilkes to build a community college. We're very fortunate in that point. At the same time, the word of community college was important. There were only 12. Wilkes was the last of the 12, was the last to become a community college from scratch. Because it was a community college, it qualified for HEFA funds, Higher Education Facilities Act. One could only get HEFA funds if that institution had a college transfer program. So only 12 qualified for that. So there were additional monies there of 350000 Wilkes came in at that point. At the same time, 1 July of 65, the Appalachian Regional Commission came into being, giving monies to institutions in the 13 states of the Appalachian region. They had monies, but it had to have seed monies prior to it. In other words, you could not get Appalachian funds unless you had state funds or federal funds of some other sort. So Wilkes qualified there. Wilkes was very lucky, as I've said, to come in the mid-60s. If it had not, I doubt it would have been much more in the Technical Institute to start. So with the 500,000 of state, 500,000 of local, 350,000 of HEFA, and a $500,000 grant from uh, Appalachian Regional Commission, Wilkes was ready to start. And there, in hangs a tail because of Mr. Lovett's generosity, we had a gift of land to start an institution, and very few other institutions in the state were as fortunate as that. Now, getting back to how I became, I did not even know, being in the city of Chapel Hill, that Wilkes was to get a community college, even though I had residents here. And when was told that Wilkes was to have a community college, of course I was not at that particular time even knowledgeable or interested. And it was through my wife that uh, I got a, an appointment. <laughs> but on the <coughs> 8th of March in 1964, the uh, Board of Trustees asked me to become president of Wilkes Community College to be. And on the first day of July, I opened up in the back of my car uh, the office of the presidency of then the new Wilkes Community College. And for a month, we had no phone or, or any place else of business. And finally, started on the second floor of the NCNB building in two offices, the College of Wilkes. And therein lies a tale. We were, wherever we could get classes, whether they were in public schools, churches, no matter where, we put up a class, fire departments, library, every place. The first president to see as the focus of Wilkes Community College from its beginning. Well, of course, everything came under the Community College Act. And being a community college, you were responsible for one-year programs, which were vocational, two-year programs, which were technical, and two-year programs, which were college transfer. So you had to go under the Community College Act and establish a program of studies that were not greater in either of the three divisions. And I think that we thought ourselves more of a, well, let's say a first class technical institute than we did a community college because not many of the students here were thinking at that time of transferring. So the focus of the institution was to prepare people for the industries of the community. Uh, for instance, we here at Wilkes, uh, 
uh, were desirous of having uh, food processing because of the Holly Farms. Uh, we were desirous to have uh, programs in horticulture because of the expensive golf courses and the like and estates around here. We desired to have programs that would deal with all of the areas of this particular community according to the industries that we had here. And I don't think we got away from it in all the years that Wilkes has been established. Although the college transfer uh, program has grown considerably from the time that we started in September of 1965. Uh, thank you, Dr. Thompson. Dr. Randolph, could you give us some idea of the many directions that Wilkes Community College has taken since its formative years with Dr. Thompson? I think uh, because of the uh, base that was established under President Thompson and 12 years as uh, in tenure as the president that um, he established the community college or the comprehensive community college here in Wilkes County and we have followed along that track as you just mentioned all that time the 26 years or so we still have for example uh, two-year technical programs we have uh, one-year vocational programs and we have a college transfer program those are the the, the bulk of the, what we call the curriculum programs here at the college and we have, in addition to that, and, and I believe it, it was even back at that particular time, uh, a large number of uh, students involved in community service or whatever it was called. Now we call occupational or continuing education, occupational extension, continuing ed. And uh, all of those uh, are part of a comprehensive community college and all things that are going on right now here at Wilkes. And, and the, uh, the number of transfer uh, students has increased. Uh, and the interesting part uh, is that the technical programs have changed. Uh, for example, listening to Dr. Thompson talk about the uh, food processing and the horticulture, uh, those programs are no longer here at the community college because the need for the training has changed. And so now we have electronics and electromechanical uh, and a number of other uh, computer type programs that have come into existence and the other ones have been phased out. But the overall general direction is the same as it was in 1966, I think. What do you see as the focus of Wilkes Community College today? I think basically that we, we really want to carry on the tradition here at, in Wilkes County of being a comprehensive community college that meets the needs of the local citizens. And uh, that, that carries uh, a wide variety of definitions depending upon where you're coming from. Uh, but uh, our main emphasis is to try to provide some form of higher education to as many citizens uh, of Wilkes County, and, and we also serve Ash and Allegheny County, uh, as we possibly can. Uh, that's our goal, that's our objective, and, and uh, that's what we try to do. And, and I think that that's an objective that will stay with Wilkes Community College, uh, hopefully, uh, for you know, for the foreseeable future. Thank you, Dr. Randolph. Dr. Thompson, you told me about 25 years ago that there would come a time in the near future that skilled technicians like brick masons and carpenters would be making considerably more money than a lot of white collar workers. That day has come, as you predicted. Upon what did you base this prediction, and how could you envision what was going to happen in the future? Well, I didn't have a crystal ball, Roger, but I'll tell you one thing, even 25 years ago, if one were to hire, as we did here at Wilkes, uh, stonemasons and had to pay them eight dollars and a half an hour, and that was 25 years ago, it began to look very lucrative to be in that kind of